I think I may have created the hardest chess puzzle ever and here's how it all happened. On Saturdays, I usually give a chess lesson to my Argentinian family who are usually five on the call. This week, there were only two of them. So I said, for the first half of the lesson, you guys play each other. And then for the second half, we'll take a random position of your game and I will play both of you combined, working together, speaking in Spanish on the call. And that will be the second half of the lesson. Little did I know that they would work so well together. They gave me the hardest time of my life. Like I was sweating bullets and my smile soon faded. I was dead serious calculating most of this game and I was very nervous, getting more and more nervous as this game moved on. We came up to a position where I had a pawn up in a queen and rook end game and I was struggling to find a win. Really, I was on the edge of my seat and eventually I cracked. Here I played g6, which is a mistake. It lets in the in-between move, queen g5 check. You see, I thought I was gonna get into this type of endgame in which it looks completely winning after queen f6. We trade and this looks winning for the white pieces. I would go h4, h5, and this is a completely winning pawn endgame. Just to give you an example of this endgame with the pawn up, it's a very interesting endgame. I go h4, king g7, and then h5, and these pawns keep the king tied to h6 or g7. And now that the king is tied down to g7, I can just mosey up my king and trying to go to h4 and g5, so that's what I do, king h6, and now I take out their waiting moves. I go a4, a6, a5, they have no more waiting moves, need to bring the king down, and now after king g7, I go king g5, pick up these pawns, or just even go for a queen, or go for checkmate. <laughs> If e4, check, king here, I'm pretty sure I'm winning with g7, king f7, we can take, king g8, king g6, and now you have to move your pawn and it's checkmate. That's what I had calculated, but I had not seen black's resource, queen g5, check. And this changes everything because I lose a pawn on g6. After I moved my king to h2, h takes g6, f takes g6, now queen takes g6. And in this position, uh, I converted to an endgame because I thought I still had some chances. The endgame looked quite similar than what I had, but just a pawn down than the variation. And so here we're equal, but it's an open field and it looks pretty good for the white pieces. So I continue on. I play king g3, king f6, and king g4. The reason why I don't push a pawn here is that these moves are too crucial. You need those tempo moves to take up a majority stake in the board. And that's exactly what I try to accomplish. Here, my king is higher up than this king. I have more space than the king on f6 that only controls three ranks, okay? This is big. And so once that is established, now I can push h4. b5, I do nothing here. You, you'll see me, I'll do absolutely nothing. I just played e4 and now we target this e5 pawn that is weak by trying to exchange off here and go for this pawn. And you'll see that after b5, I go h5, takes, takes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Here, I'm on the third key square of this pawn. For those of you who don't know, a pawn has six key squares. A key square is a square upon which a king enters and automatically we know they will win this pawn. Here, this pawn has three squares to the left and three key squares to the right. I have attained this key square on h5, which means I will win this e5 pawn. And that's exactly what happened. After their last waiting move, I go king h6, king f7, king g5, I win the second key square next to the pawn, king moves, and I'll go king g6, and now winning the third key square here. And here, Hernan and Pepo resigned because they're losing the e5 pawn. This is pretty much forced, or king d7, and then we go king f5, winning this pawn, and this endgame is completely over. I'll make a queen, I'll checkmate them, done. This is where it gets interesting. After the lesson, I plugged this position to the computer, and it told me that g6 was a mistake, and instead I should play h4, which is the calming, nice move that defends the g5 pawn and keeps this position sound with a ton of space and winning, until, I ran a new type of engine on this position and told it to solve it, and it did. And here it is white to play and win in this position. One of the hardest chess problems of all time. So hard 
that I posted it on Twitter and specifically challenged somebody who I knew was active on Twitter, Susan Pulgar, an absolute legend of the game. Just for your information, her sister, Judith Pulgar, is the greatest woman chess player ever in the history of the universe. She grew up in a household of chess. Her two sisters are grandmasters. She was taught by her father, who is a grandmaster as well. The super family of chess. And I challenged her by adding her on Twitter, hoping for a reply. This is what the tweet read. All right, actual grandmaster puzzle for those of you who like a challenge. Had this position versus my students. White to play. Challenging at Susan Polgar since last one was such a snooze. For context, I posted a troll puzzle the other day to which she commented, wait a second, ba ba ba, it's all forced. Yes, it's a joke, Susan. Take a joke, please. Three hours and 40 minutes after my tweet, we got a response. This is what it read. I don't get the puzzle. White is clearly better with a pawn up. The most obvious is h4 protecting the g4 pawn. That's fair. Very the computer move but I failed to see an immediate force win, just an eventual endgame win. She would go on to delete this tweet. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> that was fire. Okay. So, what was the solution to this insanely hard puzzle? We know it's not what I played. It's not G6, because look at that eval bar. <laughs> it's not liking it. And it's not H4 with a stable position, because as I told you, I ran a max engine on this thing and it said otherwise. Pause the video to solve. This is your chance to try to solve the 4,000 ELO chess problem. Good luck, white to plain win. In fact, I want to show you what happened when I ran the max engine on chess.com. I think it's because I have the premium membership. I, I don't know, but it has a special feature in which you run this max engine on a line and it will tell you what wins, what loses. It's, it's the max engine, like the, the computer is working full power and sometimes it overrides your Mac and really heats it up. But I put it on and I wanna put it on this video live for you guys, see what goes on. So this is the little button, run cloud analysis. I don't know what that means in terms of computing terms, but uh, I'll let you guys in the comments uh, rectify that for me. So I put it on and you'll see it's a blue thing. It'll take its time. It says it's H4 that's winning, respectable, respectable. And then after depth 26, it finds this astounding variation. And you've seen it on the screen by now, it's G6. The move that I thought was a blunder, losing a pawn, is actually a crazy 4,000 ELO chess puzzle. G6 is the winning move and it forces on so many variations. Let's break down this entire puzzle. First of all, to understand this puzzle, you need to know that G6 elicits two types of response by black, either H takes G6 or Queen G5 check. Black can play no other move. If you go Rook F6, let's say, I'm gonna take on H7, threatening to do a Queen on H8, and if you try to block this, let's say with Rook H6, I have queen g8 check. And once the king goes up, I ch queen takes g7 check. Winning this rook, winning the game completely. Same and even less good if you just run your rook along the seventh rank, I'll just do g takes h7 and this is completely winning. You cannot stop this pawn, truly. Let's say you go queen h6, same resource here, queen g g8 and then h8 queen, double queen on the board. <laughs> kind of winning here. So now we'll play the second best move of the engine. What happens if you take on g6? If you take on g6, I have f takes g6, triple threatening this rook, which is really high caliber stuff. Okay, if you take on f1, this is the variation we saw at the beginning of the video, queen takes f1 check. I mean, I'm going to f7 if you do anything else. If you go king g8, queen f7 check, this is super, super winning. I just have all the space in the world and your queen is constrained to this eighth rank. So here you need to play queen f6 and after taking and taking, I have h4, king g7 and h5 clutch. And we saw this end game completely winning for the white pieces. Now, there's also another move I didn't tell you about. And here it's rook f6. On rook f6, we have rook takes f6, 
you need to take with the queen to defend f7. If you take with the pawn, I have queen f7 checkmate. So queen takes f6, and now queen g4 defending my pawn. And here it's completely winning for the white pieces. Let's run the, the cloud analysis. Plus five, two and a half times more winning for the white pieces with this cloud analysis, even three times more winning now, crazy. And here the threat is queen c8 check. It's so tough to, to, to counter, insanely tough to counter. If you defend with queen d8, I have to go queen f5, you know, targeting f7, and this transposes to our endgame of before, completely winning. If you go king e7 to stop the queen c8 checks and winning this pawn type beat, now I have king g2, and the idea here is that we go out of all these checks with the e4s and the checkies and checkies, and we go with h4, h5, streamlining this pawn across the board. <laughs> I have this very fun variation for you, so please accept it. a6, h4, queen moves. I mean, you can't do anything else. The king can go here to avoid some checks, but here I have h5, h6, and my plan works better because the king is farther away from this g-pawn. So queen f8, h5, h6, g7, queen g6, and here our plan is just to take and go queen h8. Queen check, you can try, but e4. And even if you tried checks here, I'm just gonna go king h3, queen check, queen g3, you have no more checks, and I'm gonna queen on g8. And so here the queen goes back to g8, I take on h6, and this is completely winning, you cannot stop what white is about to accomplish here. So we see this now, and this position is somehow a total tsuk for the white pieces. Black have no good moves, and it's completely winning for white. So we move to the main variation. Here, black must do the number one move of the engine, which is queen g5 check. King h2, and then h takes g6, because I was threatening to take on h7, kind of hard to defend otherwise. Now we take. And here there are two variations that I love to death. Again, reminder that this is still losing, even if the queen is on d8, even if the queen is on g5, this is always losing, it forces queen here, and then we take, and h4, even more winning now, our king is even more advanced, and going to h5, this is over. But now, there's arguably my favorite variation of this puzzle, and it's rook f6. Rook f6 is such a beautiful variation. Here the white pieces go, rook takes f6, and again, you cannot take with the g-pawn. We know this pattern because of checkmate on f7. So you must take with the queen. And now white plays one of the most beautiful and peaceful moves I've ever seen. Queen f7 check. Sacrificing the queen because we know that this endgame is winning from my game this endgame is, it's the same exact endgame that literally happened in my game. King goes to f6, king goes to g4, we are there first, we get the four ranks here, and white only has three, right? They go uh, g6, which happened in the game, I go e4, seal it up now, b6, h4, b5, h5, and this completely wins. So that is the mind-blowingness of this. And now... <laughs> <laughs> There's a line that we're familiar with, the line that was actually played in my game, which I played through and through. What I thought was a blunder was one of the greatest moves I've ever played, without realizing it. And it's the queen takes g6 variation, in which, more simplified, we go into the exact same endgame here as the game, and we go king g3, and as we all know, this is completely winning. Well, roughly 30 minutes after Susan Polgar's original response, she comes up with the solution. And this is the tweet. Also winning pretty easily is 1g6, h takes g6, f takes g6, rook takes f1, queen takes f1, queen f6, queen takes f6, g takes, h4 with a winning endgame, but also a long finish. This would be a good playout position exercise. So this was correct, but it was an incomplete answer for a GM that was weird. She only said two variations out of the possible four major variations in this problem. I still am very impressed. I think I have one of the hardest puzzles to, known to mankind at this point. And I say you are phenomenal, which is true, she is. Then I ask her about the two more variations. What if g6, queen g5 first? 
which she hadn't said. Queen g5 check is one of the major variations that we discussed in this problem solving. Editing Zach here, and I just, like, two dots connected in my mind that just blew my mind away. It's currently 5 a.m. I'm, I'm editing this video that you're seeing right here, but there was a reply that was really, really good on the tweet, and <laughs> the name was just swimming in my mind. And this is what the, the reply read. I'm, I'm going to post this on the screen, so don't worry. I think the point of this puzzle is to realize that 1g6, queen g5, king h2, basically this guy nails it. He nails the entire variation. And I was like, who is this guy, da David Smearden? I look at his profile. There's not, no description, nothing, nothing about him. I just realized during editing this video, David Smearden, David Smearden, it was, it was just... And then it, it connected. He wrote one of my favorite chess books, The Complete Chess Swindler. And I just realized this while editing the video. We got a full on author in my tweets section that completely solved it. Like better than Susan, he found the very, very hard variation. Shout out David Smearden from Australia, crazy. Anyways, back to the video. And then she responds with the correct answer. Trade everything on f7, and then king g3, g4, walk up the king and pawn, and this is a winning endgame. And this is correct. So shout out to, to Susan Polgar for finally solving it. And yeah, I just invented like a 4,000 ELO puzzle that a grandmaster couldn't solve. And 30 minutes later, they come back with, oh, you know what? This might be winning. And this, after pretty much ridiculing my problem and not saying that it was a valid puzzle. After saying that it was correct, she finally laid off this message, which I thought was a tad bitter. <laughs> different people use different terminologies. No big deal. The main thing is it's a very good position for players to calculate and close out. She was angry that this was not a winning puzzle enough. A puzzle is a puzzle, GM. A puzzle is a puzzle. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. It took a lot of work to reconstruct the events from the happenings of yesterday night, but I hope you enjoyed this game. When I told the story to Hernan and Pepo, my original opponents, they couldn't believe their ears.